Hello guys and welcome to this sessions of the Kubernetes. Hope you all are doing good. So today I came with a new topic that is multiple scheduler and it's also called as the custom scheduler. So in this particular session we will cover going to cover uh, regarding what is the multiple or you can say the custom scheduler and how to create it why it is required to create it and what is the benefits of this custom schedule. So regarding the custom scheduler, we are going to some important topics. This is related with the CKA certification exam. So as you know that the Kubernetes is the highly extensible and you can write your own Kubernetes scheduler program as well. You can package it, deploy it as a default scheduler or as an additional scheduler in the Kubernetes cluster. That way all of the other applications can go through the default scheduler. However, one specific applications can use your custom scheduler. That is that you created for your business need and requirement. Your Kubernetes cluster have the multiple scheduler at the same time. So at the same time you have the default scheduler also or the custom scheduler which is required for some of the applications which suits your business needs. So Kubernetes as you know that the Kubernetes sits with the default scheduler. Okay, this is the default which you will find in the queue system name space. Uh, if default scheduler does not suit your need and you not need to modify uh, the, the default scheduler in your way, uh, in the custom way, you can implement your own custom, uh, own uh, scheduler as well. So multiple scheduler can run simultaneously alongside the default scheduler. This default scheduler is also running, which listening uh, all the definitions files which don't have uh, a specific uh, a specification regarding regarding the which scheduler to be picked. So by default, the default one will be picked. But if you define in the um, the pod definitions file uh, and and put there the scheduler name um, with your default custom scheduler name, it will uh, picked by the uh, default custom scheduler name. So we can instruct the Kubernetes what scheduler to use for each of your pod in the definitions file, which I already mentioned. In the pod definitions file, add a new field when you creating and trying to use the custom scheduler. At that time, in the pod definition file, you have to add a new field called system. Uh, sorry, scheduler name, scheduler name, uh, colon, and uh, the default scheduler name. You have to specify the uh, custom scheduler name there. This way, when the pod is get created, the right scheduler will pick it up and schedule it. So we need to define a certain, uh, you can say the port number also. So I will, in the hands-on, I will going to uh, guide you how you can uh, opt the, the, the pod that is currently available to use. So in the scheduler, you know, if the scheduler was not configured correctly, then the pod will continue to remain in the pending state. Suppose you uh, by mistake uh, written, uh, there is a typo in writing the custom scheduler name. So in the, the pod will uh, start looking for uh, that particular custom scheduler name, which you have um, written as a typo. So in, the, in that case, the pod will be in the pending state till uh, you correct that name. So if multiple copies of the same scheduler are running on a different node, only one can be active at a time. So, uh, like in the example, you have the default scheduler, you have the custom scheduler, and you created such um, uh, different different types of custom scheduler. But uh, there will be only one leader, uh, which will listen all the things, uh, which do, all the definitions file, or monitoring keep on monitoring all the definitions file, which don't have the scheduler name available. So then that is the con a good candidate for the default scheduler. So that, that's where the leader elect options help in choosing a leader who will lead the scheduling activities. So basically the custom scheduler we are uh, going to create in the hands-on uh, is for a particular um, scenario, your business needs that you don't want um, uh, this particular applications to be created by the default scheduler. You want some custom scheduler. Uh, so in the, for this purpose, you are going to create a, a, a multiple scheduler or the custom scheduler. Uh, regarding the CK uh, exam, in my exam, uh, 
particularly there is no questions uh, on this area but uh, there is a 90 percent chance that the, multi, the questions will come regarding the multiple cellular that they will ask you to create a custom cellular with some name and they will ask you to uh, create a port which uh, will be run by that particular custom cellular so you you can see that uh, this questions carry a seven percent of radius so this is a very important topics regarding the ck exam but it depends upon the question sets that you have been assigned in the exam so there are several uh, question sets and which uh, question sets you will receive it's depend but uh, this is very important topics and you can't uh, ignore these topics that uh, okay this is not uh, the questions that ask frequently so better to skip these questions and if it's uh, better to learn it because it might it come to the in, in the in the exam so better to have a better understanding because this is a very easy topic and uh, uh, if you have to score uh, in CKA exam then you should have the understanding of uh, the multiple study. So now I'm jumping to the lab session because this is the theoretical aspects and uh, when we uh, do the some uh, lab session on this you have a clear understanding. Uh, so uh, I am jumping to the lab session and if you guys didn't subscribe me yet uh, then please do subscribe it share it, it with your friends as well. Uh, and uh, now I'm jumping to the Okay, friends, let's uh, monitor the environment first. Cube CTL and Cube System New Space Get Port. So, we are going to create a custom cellular. So, it will be also a static uh, port, you can say. So you can see that uh, the uh, all the uh, cluster core, core component like ETCD, the cube API, the cube controller manager, and the cube settler is a static a static port. So we are going also going to create a static port, but this is for the cube settler, and we will name it as a, uh, as my my settler for example. So uh, first we need to identify the, where the particular uh, static port definitions file has been kept because if you don't know about the static port you can refer my videos on a static port which in which I uh, add some more uh, uh, I elaborated in a more way more uh, with the with the hands on also so what we, the static port and how it works and what is the use who is responsible to create the static port all those stuffs so now i am going to run some run some command to just uh, identify where is the uh, static port definition file has been kept for the core components so ps ux I'm, get, I'm going to grab for Qlet. So here you will find the, all the informations, but I am basically concerned about uh, this configuration files. I'm going to copy it because uh, this particular uh, configuration file keep the informations regarding the uh, static port definitions file locations. So let's clear the screen. Cat this file and I am going to grab it for uh, for the static word. So you can find see that uh, I have the locations now for the static word definitions file which is under etct Kubernetes manifest. So this is the default path. So, but uh, uh, doing anything in the environment, you have to uh, check the path uh, because uh, uh, sometimes the path uh, get changed as per the environment. So, uh, I just identified the path where the definitions file for the static port has been kept, where I'm going to clone a copy of the, um, the cellular to make it as a custom cellular, which have the name of my cellular. So before um, doing and uh, uh, jumping to the uh, creations, uh, I'm just um, uh, uh, fetch one port which is available to use. So for this, you can use the command uh, net start 
N A T U L P. Uh, and, and grep for any port means, uh, for example, sorry, I'm I'm looking for the uh, uh, that we can use uh, this particular port. This is the example. You can uh, check any of the port. So it's returned nothing. So it means that this port is available to use. So I'm going to use one zero two eight two. In this way, you can check uh, which port to use, which is available. Uh, because in case uh, if it's not available, then it will return some information that this port is currently in use. So it's not returning. It means that it is available to use. Now I am jumping to this particular location. Etcd, sorry, etc. Kubernetes manifest. Uh, sorry, manifest. Unless so you can find all the definitions file there but um, i'm going to copy i'm mainly concerned about the creating the custom settler for the cube settler so i'm going to copy it and we had a different name cube settler uh, my my settler dot viable okay now i'm going to edit it my scheduler so here you can see that this is the, um, the, the clone copy of the, our main uh, scheduler so i'm going into insert mode to do and the changes as per our need so uh, uh, i will change the name to my scheduler okay this will also be a part of name space cube system you don't have to change anything on it so leader elect because uh, uh, default have e is the leader and this is not the leader so i am putting it as a false because by default the default one will be picked and the port as i already mentioned i am going to use 10282 because this is free i already checked it and uh, the same uh, we have to uh, modify here as well so let's do the changes 282 for the health monitoring for the local host we are going to change it here as well okay and for the custom settler we have to write some configurations uh, related things here so we already mentioned the port and we are going to add some more informations which uh, so that it can be identified as like the cellular name which is the my cellular and one more thing uh, we have to use for the custom setter is uh, uh, secure port so that's it i did all the changes let me uh, verify it as well So I am going to save it. Okay. So now I I did all the changes and I am going to uh, save save these particular uh, things. And after that, I am going to monitor uh, uh, the, uh, the the status of the uh, custom scheduler. So I am going to run a command. Cube ctl going for the name is PS cube system and get port so here you can see that the my uh, my, my schedule scheduler kernel is also as a static port it's already get created here so and it's running fine so it's ready to use so i'm now i'm going to uh, create a, a definitions file for the port and in which i am going to use uh, my scheduler uh, uh, my my cellular custom custom my cellular 
so the, it will uh, it will um, and we can say we can see the event also after that that it's uh, picking uh, or uh, running the pod is running on that particular cellular by using the, that particular cellular or not so for this uh, let's clear the screen first so uh, this is my locations currently and what uh, in this particular session i am going to uh, to I am creating a definitions file in this particular locations and uh, uh, can you please tell me if I create a definitions file on this particular locations then what is the impact either it will be picked by the uh, custom cellular or not so I am giving you 10 seconds and you can you please think on it Okay guys, if I create a definitions file using the custom cellular name, custom uh, definitions file for pod using the custom cellular name, it will be treated as a static pod, not the simple pod. And the static, running the static pod is the responsibility of Kubelet, not a cellular. So this is a very good example that currently I am going to perform. So it will give you a clear understanding that what is the impact if I create a deficiency file at this particular location. Because this particular location is keep on monitoring by the kubelet. And kubelet will consider any deficiency file that we keep on this particular location as a static pod, not a simple pod. So uh, let's create it. VI. Uh, let's uh, create a, 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 a definition file first by using the imperative command. Q CTL run. Uh, any 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 examples like you can say that the uh, example port and this will use image is equal to nginx and dry run uh, is equal to client output in a yaml format so this will give you a deficiency file i'm going to copy it from so that i can just paste it vi and pod simple but i am keeping this deficiency file in the a static pod at the place where we keep we have the static pod definitions file so this uh, things to be noted and uh, uh, you have to be very very uh, very careful on this so i'm going to modify it and here i'm going to use uh, the custom scheduler but it will be done by the kubelet not the, by the custom scheduler because the definitions file is we are keeping at the locations where we are keeping we, we will have the uh, static uh, definitions file so it it's always run by the kubelet and we're just going to show you the cellular name will be space my now i'm going to save it Now monitor the port, kubectl, get port. So you can see that this created a static port, not the simple port because the here, here you have the node uh, prefix as well. So which, which uh, tells that this is a static port because uh, we also keep the diffusions files for uh, the port in the locations where we keep uh, the diffusions file for the static port. So you can see that this is a this is a static pod. Let's describe it. Kubectl describe pod example. So here you can see that this is running by the kubelet, not by our custom cellular, because this is the responsibility of kubelet to run the static pod. 
now how, how we can uh, we did it wrong we we have to keep the uh, the deficient file at different places so how we can run a simple pod by using the MyScheduler. so you have to keep the the, uh, the deficient file at some other places or you can do it in this way uh, like uh, just run it just apply this particular deficient files again q ctl apply minus f pod and this will create a simple pod not a, so you have with our deficient file the kubelet run kubelet um, monitor the locations and created a static pod and this is um, the thing that you are running manually so when you are doing the things using the compound using the command you it will um, uh, invoke the api uh, of the uh, uh, cube api and it will uh, uh, process accordingly it's uh, pass the information to the cube schedule uh, cube scheduler and uh, on all the things then uh, the the cube scheduler pass the information to the cube api it will inform the cube late cube late will assign a container so in the, in the same process that by default uh, the same process let me clear the screen first Let me clear the screen. So you can see that in, uh, currently we have two pod. One is the simple pod known as the example pod, and the other one is the static pod, which is run by the qubit. So I'm going to describe pod, example pod. And here you have the informations that it's running by the my scheduler, not by the kubelet. So uh, this is because this is a simple pod because we done the uh, command to create a pod and uh, we already provided in the definitions file that it should be picked by the custom scheduler. So uh, and the other things that uh, which uh, which is run by the kubelet for the static. So in in that case the kubelet will responsible to create a pod. Uh, you can uh, monitor uh, in the several way like it. Let's clear this screen. Kubectl get event. Uh, this this is the things that you can. Um, Keep on monitoring that your custom scheduler picking up the, no, the pod, uh, pod for the creations or not. So grab for my scheduler. And it's not returning because uh, 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 there is nothing in the event. So we can uh, uh, see the log of the my scheduler also uh, like with kubectl. And it will give you that uh, um, information which says that the, the health is uh, uh, perfectly fine and the scheduler is currently running. Then in the same way, we can uh, see the status of the my scheduler, the custom scheduler, by using this command also. So, CTL. Cube system get port. So my scheduler is running perfectly fine, and uh, um, it's uh, it's working on the depletions file and uh, uh, trying to uh, assign a uh, assign a particular particular port um, on the on the basis of the scheduler custom scheduler we uh, provided the information in the depletions file. So if you guys like this video, please subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends also. Uh, thank you and keep learning.